to the YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about some of my favorite westerns in my collection. Now, obviously, westerns are, is a really big genre. It has been going for probably the longest. You think of westerns, you think of stars like John Wayne, you think of stars like Clint Eastwood getting their start, stars like Charles Bronson. You get all these big stars over the course of time establishing themselves in western. So today I'm going to do my top, you know what, we're not going to, we're not going to do a top 10, we're going to do a top 11 because everyone else is doing top 10s. So we're going to go one more than everyone else. <laughs> so let's start off with number 11, Rio Bravo. This movie, it was just edged out of the list by another, by number 10. It was really close between this and number 10. This is, in my view, one of the best John Wayne movies and one of the best Westerns overall. I mean, you have the, the chemistry between D. Martin and John Wayne and also Ricky Nelson. And you also have like a really good plot in this whole movie. I mean, the town is, uh, I can't reveal too much, but like there's a, Rival, there's a gang in the area and they're creating mischief, if you can say that. And, um, yeah, basically the three of them are, obviously John Wayne's the sheriff. He usually plays the sheriff in these movies. And I've chosen this over True Grit as well. So True Grit is not higher in this list. This is, in my view, a better movie than True Grit. But I know that's going to be controversial. But I'm going to put this in my top 11. So this is number 11. This is just edged out by another one. And now we'll start my actual top 10 of this. So Magnificent Seven is number 10. Now this is one of those great Westerns that really, you know, all of these movies are usually bad gang comes to town, the good guys ride in the town, the good gang come together and fight the bad guys. Kind of feels like wrestling, doesn't it? But yeah, Seven Samurai is one of those movies that really get you. It's one of those big all-star movies. Yul Brenner really carries it, you know, it's like, it's one of those really great, um, I mean, Steve McQueen's in this as well, don't get me wrong, Steve McQueen's in the movie, but it's one of those movies that just grab you. It's just one of those movies that really carry. And there is a movie higher on this list that this was inspired from, but I'll talk about that later. This one is one of the more respectable Westerns, one of the better Westerns. When a lot of people think of Westerns, they think of this movie, but that is number, that's number 10. Now, I'm about to show a person of an Indigenous person who died. Uh, for people who don't understand why I do this before I show an Indigenous person who's passed away, it's just respectful of the culture, and it's also, you know, I understand his wishes were that he can be shown after he's passed away. I've read the wishes of the family and all that, so that's what his wishes were. So I am going to show him, but if you are uncomfortable, just be aware I'm about to show an image of a person who's passed away, an Indigenous person. Number nine is the tracker with David Gupalu. It is one of the best Westerns I've ever seen. And also as an indigenous person myself, I have a connection to this movie. I feel like it shows what early colonization did to indigenous mobs across Australia. It's something that you can basically feel the greediness of it. It's something that you can feel how raw it is. And yeah, one of my favorite movies. I'm not going to dig too far into it because I feel like you need to experience it yourself. But definitely number nine on my list for a reason. I will say that. Number eight is Hang 'em High. What can I say about Hang 'em High? One of my favorite movies. I've mentioned it in other videos that Hang 'em High is one of my favorite westerns of all time. I have edged out Outlaw Josie Wales. So this edged out Outlaw Josie Wales. Um, Outlaw Jersey Wales is not in my collection at the moment. It's, I don't even think there's a Blu-ray in Australia that I can get, but I still prefer Hang 'em High over Hi Outlaw Jersey Wales. And it's a reason. This one has a lot better of a structure overall than I, Outlaw Jersey Wales has a structure as well. Don't get me wrong. Don't jump down my throat over that one. But I just love Hang 'em High. I love that he's essentially trying to find the people who, um... How do I say this without spoiling it? He's trying to find the people who did him wrong and who wrongly accused him and did things happen and so on. But one of the better Clint Eastwood movies in my opinion. So that's going as number eight. So we're down to number eight now. And so we've had 10, nine, eight. Yep. So we're down. Number seven is next. And it's another John Wayne movie. The Searchers. This one actually did make the top 10 because... This is, in my view, the one I think of when I think of John Wayne. I think of The Searchers. I think of The Little Girl. I think of all that stuff. I think of how this movie 
I mean, it's a product of its time. Obviously, there's aspects of this movie that wouldn't hold up under modern standards. But when you think of John Wayne, you think of The Searchers. Or, you know, there's some people who think Katie Elder and stuff like that. But for me, I think of The Searchers when I think of John Wayne. I think this is the movie that I instantly associate with John Wayne. And for that, it's also a really good plot overall. It's, overall, it is a really good movie. Doesn't hold up in the modern standards. So if you're going in this with political correctness, just be aware it doesn't hold up to modern standards based on the tones of the movie and so on. But it's in my collection and in my top 10 for a reason. It's the one I think of when I think of John Wayne. And it's one of the movies I will regularly watch of John Wayne's. Number six is Once Upon a Time in the West. Now, I haven't watched the 4K copy yet, but this is one of those Westerns that really solidified Charles Bronson to me. It showed me his range as a serious actor. He's one of my favorite actors overall. I've got Death Wish here somewhere. I've got a lot of his acting work across everything. Like, I think I've got... Um, Oh, there was a Western he did where um, the guy from Seven Samurai came over. I think it was Red Eye or Red... Red Sun. I think it was Red Sun. I, that's also a really good Western. But I say this one's better than most of his other big Western movies. But that's subjective. That's based on my own personal opinion. Don't have to agree with it. But I just love how this movie gets it right. And he's got the harmonica and just the scope of like that first gunfight in the movie. And I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it. I'm trying not to do spoilers in these things because they, people do watch my videos for recommendations. And I don't want to spoil big plot points. But there is a gunfight early on in the movie. And I'm not going to reveal what happens. But just the harmonica ringing out during that is eerie. And it shows the type of movie you're going to be watching. And yeah, obviously it has a lot of uh, Ennio Morricone, it's uh, Sergio Leone's directing. So yeah, it's in the same realm as Good, Bad and the Ugly and so on. It's same director, same same person who did the music. You know, if for the people who don't understand what type of movie that is, that's what you're getting. You're getting something similar to the Good, the Bad and the Ugly, essentially. So what are we up to now? We've got one, two, three, four, five. So what does this make this? This makes this the top five. Wow, we're down to top five already, guys. So in that case, number five is The High Plains Drifter. Now, I love this movie. Obviously, you can see it's not open. This is the 4K copy I've got recently. I have watched the Blu-ray over and over again. I've watched DVD over and over again in the past. But I did not have the 4K till recently, so I haven't watched this one yet on the 4K. But it's one of my favorite Clint Eastwood movies. I mean... They don't even give him a character name like Blondie or anything. They don't even give him any name. They just, you know, he's the man with no name. And that's what he was known as, the man with no name. But this does it so well. You could say this is an unofficial, like, uh, Dollars movie. But there's just a scene at the end of the movie. And I don't want to give it too big of a spoiler. But there's this beautiful shot where he's, it's a silhouette. And you just kind of see Clint standing there with darkness with, like, fire behind him, in a sense. But... It's one of the best shots I've ever seen in a Western. And I absolutely love this movie. It's one that I'll constantly go to. I haven't obviously went to it recently because it would be opened, but I'm definitely going to watch this at some point. And it's one of my favorite Westerns overall. So that's why it's in the top five. Number four is a movie that a lot of people may not have heard of because it was a Dennis Hopper's in it. Obviously, a lot of people know Dennis Hopper, but a lot of people don't know that he was actually in an Australian Western movie. And that might came, come as a shock to a lot of people because they're like, wait, hold on. Dennis Hopper in an Australian Western movie, why have I never seen this? Well, it's called Mad, Mad Dog Morgan. And it's just one of those movies that like, um, I don't know if I can show the back cover of this, but yeah, I mean, I can probably show the back cover. You can probably see Dennis Hopper there. I don't know if the glare is going to be on that cover, but you can kind of see how he looks in the movie. And obviously it's dealing with a very gritty plot. But it's one of my favorites for a reason. It's one that I'll constantly go to. It's one of those movies that really grab you and really brings you in. And that's because of the acting range of Dennis Hopper. Like, Dennis Hopper is amazing. And obviously, it's got other cast in this too. I think, yeah, Jack Thompson, David Gupalu, as I mentioned earlier. But yeah, it's got an all-star cast in this, at least if you're into Australian movies. It has an all-star cast in terms of Australian cast. I think, um, was Bill Hunter in this one as well? I think, like, Bill Hunter was in this as well. I may be mistaken on that one, though, but either way, if you have a chance to watch Mad Dog Morgan, it's a really, really good movie, 
and one of Dennis Ho it's probably Dennis Hopper's best western definitely maybe he's one of his best movies overall which he's saying a lot because of his acting range with like Easy Rider and so on but this is the one I think of when I think Dennis Hopper I think Mad Dog Morgan so there's one that's an Australian one for you Number three, we've got the top three now, guys. This is getting even more down to the wire. And this is going to be controversial because I'm putting it as number three. The good, the bad, and the ugly is number three. Why would I put the good, the bad, and the ugly as number three? Well, it's because I feel the other two above it are better overall westerns. But this, this is other level in terms of westerns. This is, in my view, a definitive western. This is one that so many people turn to. Obviously, it's Spaghetti Western. So it's not the same as every other Western. It's Spaghetti Western. But, you know, you have to think of it as everybody has seen this movie. Everybody who comes to Westerns watch the Dollar Trilogy first. If they've seen no other Westerns, everyone tells them, yeah, start with the Dollar Trilogy and then work your way back from there. But I can't say any more about this movie that hasn't been said before. I just love that... You know, it's Clint at his best, and it's also uh, Lee Van Cleef at his best, and it's, it's also Eli Wallace at his best. Like, there are so many aspects of this movie that make it so good, and that's why it's such a good Western. Everyone was firing on all cylinders. Sergio Leone and Annie Morricone got the score right, and got the directing right, got everything right. It's such a good movie because it just works, and it just... I prefer the... I prefer the shorter cut. I don't prefer the extended cut where they dubbed it over and dubbed in the Clint Eastwood voice because they didn't have the original audio. I prefer the cut that was, I believe, the US cut. I believe that's once on the 4K. That's the version I prefer. There is another cut out there longer, but obviously there's scenes in there that... It's nice to see those scenes put out on film. It's nice to see them available. But they also didn't have the original audio, so you're not hearing Clint's acting work. You're not hearing Lee Van Cleef. You're not hearing Eli Wallace. I think they had Eli Wallace dub some of the lines because he was obviously able to. I think um, Clint Eastwood also dubbed some of his lines, but they're obviously, you can tell they're older. And Lee Van Cleef, they got someone else in because Lee Van Cleef passed away a lot, very long time ago at this point. But I prefer that cut of the movie. That's why I have it on 4K because the Blu-ray in Australia didn't have the, the uh, American cut or the other cut, the North American cut. So this one does, and that's why it's number three. Number two is a movie I have shown quite a lot on this channel. It's one of my favorite movies overall, but it's also one of my favorite westerns. And that's The Chain of Jimmy Blacksmith. This is, in my view, one of the best movies overall. As I just said, it's one of the movies that I go to. It's one that I'll constantly reference and say, yep, when I think of Australian cinema, this is probably the best it gets. Like, this is amazing, this movie. But it's also gritty you need to go in with reservations of you're going to see some really dark aspects you're going to see some really things that may trigger you i mean i've heard people running out of cinemas for terrifier 3 and i haven't seen terrifier 3 but i've heard i've heard about people running out of cinemas and feeling sick and all that and i'm sure they do gory stuff in that but the topic of this movie you can kind of see like a black man in and being indigenous man you can see an indigenous man being wronged by the system takes matters into his own hands and obviously does some things that I mean it's based on a true story but it's also pretty dark to say the least but I'll let you experience that for yourself I'm not going to tell you anymore definitely check out the channel Jimmy Blacksmith if you want to see an Australian Western you can watch Mad Dog Morgan as well but when I think of Australian Western this is up there this is like it's number two for a reason I rank it really high and now we're down to number one. Now, number one has been endlessly referenced so many times. So many things have drawn from it over the years. I mentioned earlier in this list, uh, Seven, The Magnificent Seven. Great movie. But this, in my view, is where a lot of Western aspects were taken from. A lot of aspects that you see today. Even Tarantino referenced this. this. Like, there's so many directors who reference this movie. Because it's so brilliant. Seven Samurai. Kurosawa. How do you go past Kurosawa for Seven Samurai? Like, this is essentially the groundwork for what all Westerns came after it. 
So many directors are inspired by this. So many directors copycat this. So many try to emulate this. It is the definitive Western for so many reasons, for so many directors, for so many movies. As I mentioned, Seven Samurai, uh, Seven Magnificent Seven. There are so many aspects of this movie that just constantly get referenced, even to this day. The beautiful shots in this movie, like, it's black and white, so you get those beautiful black and white shots. And, like, when I think of, it's not only just the best foreign movie, it's not only just the best Western it's one of the best movies ever made. Like, so many people reference this. Like, I know it's getting a 4K soon. This is the Blu-ray Criterion. And I know the 4K is coming out, and I'm going to absolutely try to get my hands on it. I have to have that in my collection, the 4K restoration of this. But this is, in my view, the number one for obviously a reason. This is great. And this is, in my view, the Western. Others are a Western. But this is the Western. And the reason I say it's the Western is because it is endlessly referenced. It is endlessly copycatted still to this day. Its impact on the film industry overall is still felt to this day. And that's why it's number one. And it's also one of my favorites. All these are my favorites. <laughs> but yeah, let me turn that cover around. So these are the top 10 slash 11. We had Rio Bravo, The Magnificent Seven, The Tracker, Hang 'em High, The Searchers, once Upon a Time in the West, High Plains Drifter, Mad Dog Morgan, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, The Chain of Jim Blacksmith, and Seven Samurai. Tell me what you think in the comments, guys. Let me know your top 10 slash 11. And tell me why they're your top 10 slash 11. Because I like to hear a difference of opinion. I like to hear what you guys are watching. I like to hear what why you think certain movies don't work in my collection. I did the Bond video the other day and some people were like, oh, License to Kill kind of threw me off. And also... How did you choose that over Octopus? How did you choose um, Moonraker over like Octopussy? I'll put that as the end screen, the Bond movie, the Bond movies if you want to watch it. But I know people were saying, okay, but it, you did say many times that these are your favorites. And as I said in the, that video as well, things can change over time. Like I might go back and watch, obviously one movie in, not in here is Kill Bill. And I know that is a very strong Western. So, you know, with Kill Bill, I would have to rewatch that and I might rediscover it. I might enjoy it. There's a lot of movies not referenced here. And for that reason, these are my top 10 as it stands right now. Now, obviously, you don't have to agree with it, but that's why there's a comment section down there. Jump down and comment. Watch one of the videos on one side of this video, wherever I decide to put it. But watch that one. That's the Bond movies. And let me know what you think. Catch you in the next one. Peace.